Well, hello, 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 my friends. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I am doing a little thing called the Millennial Perspectives in the Book of Revelations. Um, let me kind of explain a little bit about it. First, I'm going to speak on, there's not much to really talk about this one, and I won't have charts to this one, but it is called post-millennialism. It's a, it's a view dating back to the 18th century, is that through the preaching of the gospel, the world will gradually be one to Christ. In this way, the millennium is being fulfilled. This view believes Christ will return after the world has been made worthy enough. Hence, forth the name post-millennium. Note, I'm going to say something here. None of these beliefs are mine. My belief is how the Bible states it and how the Bible states it only, the Word of God. Jesus will come back, and that's that. I'm just giving you the views through a theology to maybe help you know your church's point of view or a teacher or someone you listen to on uh, Facebook or YouTube or just anything to kind of just get a viewpoint of how they view these things because man has made many different views of the book of Revelations. The second is a amillennial view. It rejects the idea of a literal thousand-year reign of Christ after his return at the end of the age. Hence, its name, or no millennial. It sees the millennium being fulfilled in a spiritual fashion in the ministry of the church during this present age. A third viewpoint is a historic Premillennial view. They hold that the book relates to the life of the church. The various persecutions are to be experienced by the believers up to the end time when they will be delivered from the power of the Antichrist by the return of Jesus Christ, followed by a millennium and a lengthy period during which Christ reigns on earth, then the final judgment comes where the believers will be at the great white throne. The fourth and final view is a dispositional premillennial view. In this view, let me add that in this view, the first three chapters of Revelations deal with the church, after which the saints are raptured from the earth. This is around chapter 4, verse 1 through 2, where it says, come up here, is taken to refer to the rapture. See, the middle of the books, chapter 4 through 19, deals with Israel during the seven-year period of the Great Tribulation that does not affect the church because it's with Christ. Then the Battle of Armageddon in chapter 19 begins with uh, Christ be, uh, brings with him the raptured Christians and establishes a Jewish millennium in fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. The Christian saints rule with Christ for 1,000 years, then Satan is released from his prison for a final battle, then cast into the lake of fire. This view also calls a pre-tribulation rapture to happen where the church is removed before the great tribulation. See, hold to the view that Christ is coming back. Read the Bible for what it is, not what man's thought is. Ask the Holy Spirit to discern to you. Martin Luther, a theologist from way back then, had said, We ought to live as Christ was crucified yesterday, risen today, coming tomorrow. See, the Word of God is only understood by the gift of the Holy Spirit. We all have views, but the Word is all that matters. We can put equations after equations into it, but the fact stands God's Word is God's Word. Now let's look at some of these viewpoints that they hold chapter by chapter with some, chart, with, with some charts that I created. And stay faithful in our Lord Jesus Christ, my friends. Now let me go ahead and try to open up some of these charts that I had made and share them with you guys. Now note that I tried my best to maybe make these as best as I could for you guys. So I'll leave them up for a short period of time. And then I'll switch over to the next one. You guys can pause the videos and read them. Um, I'm not going to be talking during this or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this up. And just um, 
get ready to see this. So God bless you guys. So hopefully you guys pause that to read through that. I didn't want to leave it up there too long. But like I said, I just, um, I hold to the viewpoint of how the Bible is. I read the Bible for what it is, not for how a bunch of people. I'm not saying that a bunch of theologists and teachers throughout the time haven't had a view. But as you can see reading them charts, some of the views some of these have have reminded me of some Christians I've known and some churches I went to where they literally hold to some of these views which really kind of go against the Bible if you've read uh, Revelations. And it just, it, it it was confusing all in all. The study I've been doing for a while on it, it, it I said probably about five months ago I was going to release this. It took me five months of studying because it was a little confusing to me myself. And it had to make, make me look at, at um, some of the views that I've had in my life about it and make me realize that my view is just that God's word is the infallible word and his word is true. and a lot of these views, some of the points in the views match with how the Bible says it, but some of the views are pretty far fetched, like post millennialism, which I didn't put in there because I really couldn't find much on them. They really believe that we are going to hand the kingdom to God Himself, which is just not right because we wouldn't be handing the kingdom to God when He already has the kingdom. He's going to come back one day and He's going to come back with a vengeance, a wrath of God that a lot of people are not talking about. But it will come, and it's going to come because the earth is deserving of the wrath of God that is going to come for all of the abortions, all of the mockery of the Bible, mockery of Jesus Christ, all the LGBTQ. It's going to come one day, and all of us faithful saints that we have been, you know, staying and, and pulling together, we're seeing it. So God bless you guys. I love you guys. I'm going to keep this at 10 minutes. God bless.